Hello, beloved. It's me, Robin. Robin Hallett, intuitive healer and light sparkler at RobinHallett.com. And this is Tea with Robin. On today's episode, Priorities Now. We've got the stuff we used to care about. We got the stuff we used to worry about. We got the stuff we used to be going for. What are your priorities now? How are you taking good care of you now? And how do we allow ourselves to open to what's new now? Our inspiration is a beautiful poem. It sure inspired me. And we'll have a letter from a friend who's wondering, how do you deal with the resistance that comes up in a relationship when your partner makes a decision that impacts you both? Come grab a cup of yum yum and meet me here. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Robin. Welcome back to the podcast, Tea with Robin. This is episode 117. Hello, hello, hello. And if it's your first time here, welcome. Thanks so much for giving this a a listen. And I hope that this brings you comfort and inspiration and joy. Friends returning. Hi. Did you miss me? I took a break for Thanksgiving. I hope that you've been enjoying these last few weeks. Um, So I hope that you've been wonderfully well. And how is the weather in your heart these days? How are you doing as we move into, you know, holiday, more of the COVID stuff, you know, the news around there being a possible vaccine and all of that? How are you doing? How are you doing personally? How are you doing with the worldly stuff? I hope that you're you're taking good care of yourself and being kind and gentle and allowing some space for rest. Yes, I do. I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, it's starting to get darker earlier, right? And it's always that time of year where I feel like we need to slow down and we need more rest, that energy of resting and restoring. Maybe you've been feeling that urge to go to bed earlier. You know, I'm sure you're noticing how the cycles are affecting you. Isn't it interesting how the darker days and this, this time, this year, the way it's been going, and here we go into this holiday season where you can tend to really be busying yourself with a lot of trips to the store and a lot of busy work. A lot of things, getting things ready for Christmas, so to speak, or Hanukkah or, you know, Kwanzaa or whatever you're celebrating over there. I I always admire that struggle. I'll use the word struggle between it's getting darker. It's a slower pace. People are getting into the nesting vibes, but also it's a very hectic, busy time of year filled with guilt and I should be buying gifts and wrapping gifts and sending cards and doing all these things and having parties and baking cookies. And so there's this beautiful practice offering itself to us now of prioritizing ourselves, prioritizing our joy, prioritizing the meaningful the, um, yeah, restoring energy instead of depleting it. So we'll talk about that coming up. Over here, I'm doing great, honestly. Um, And when I say great, I don't necessarily mean happy or gay, you know, (laughs) but I really feel like I am uh, enjoying my time and taking good care of myself and not pushing Uh, right now, pushing myself to be busy, pushing myself to do things I don't want to do. I'm really taking good care of me, spending a lot of time alone and on my own. And I'm having a lot. This has been a deep time of realization for me. And I'm going to talk about that coming up. It's really been a deep time of recognizing things and um making connections in my life that I hadn't really put together yet. 
And I wonder if that's been some of your experience too. Have you been spending some time alone and on your own? I hope so. You know, it seems like that is a real healing balm right now that we could all do with more of. And, um, you know, even... <laughs> Hi, here comes your psychic ding. And even you mamas out there and you papas out there, you know, I was just talking to a favorite mom that I work with. And I said to her, you first thing in the morning belongs to you, even if it's two minutes. Time just for us. Time just for us. So before I dive into all of that, did you bring some yum yum with you today? I have some yummy coffee with a little heavy whipping cream in there and some sea salt. No sweet. I like it just like that. It reminds me of a coffee nip. And you got to say the P, coffee nip. Those were my favorite candies, even as a little kid. I really, really like them. Can't really eat them now. Something in the high fructose corn syrup. All right, Robin, just stop talking. All right, so let's cheers to us entering into this time. Us reuniting. It's been a little been a couple weeks here's to our reunion and also here's to us on this journey here's to gentle weather in our hearts as we move deeper into this holiday season cheers mm, so good so i just was talking about prioritizing prioritizing what's meaningful what's truly meaningful for us now and God, it seems like every, to a person, everybody I talk to right now in sessions, in texts, in, on Instagram, even the neighbors, even my family, it feels like this time is wearing very thin on us. I don't know if that's how you say it, but you probably know what I'm talking about. Like, it's just harder to make yourself do the stuff you don't want to do. The things you push yourself to do in the past, it just falls away. You, It falls away. You can't make yourself do it. It's not honest anymore. You know, think about relationships. Think about um, things you used to pretend you were okay with. So that's here. There's also this, you know, and of course, there's still the worry and concern. But there's this other energy here too. And I wonder if you're feeling this as well. Even though there's worry or concern, there's something else here that feels sort of like we're going to be all right. We're getting through this time. And we don't quite know exactly how it's going to look yet. But do you feel this? There's a little somehow... There's a little light coming at the end of the tunnel. I don't know if it's like it took a whole year. I was talking to my friend the other day and I said, you know, I don't know if it's like it took me a whole year of slightly resisting the pandemic <laughs> to it's almost a year. OK, um, to f finally get to this point where I could have a little reckoning and maybe some collapse time, some time where I could really break down and release and let go and restoring my energy and time alone on my own where I'm really not distracting myself. I'm just being with me. I feel, I sort of feel like everybody I know is going through this on some level and not everybody will articulate it the same way and not everybody even understands it. You know, that's the beauty of being on a journey. We know so many people and frankly, we're all at different levels of understanding and different awarenesses with our spiritual knowing, um, right? I know for me that I am just finding these new edges, I'll call them edges, new edges where parts of me have graduated <laughs> and other parts are embarking on a new learning curve now. And part of the learning curve is the self-care learning curve.
Is it okay to take very good care of yourself with no reasons? You're not sick. You're not out of work. You're not recovering from some injury. You're not getting over something. You're just choosing self-care for the hell of it. You know what I mean? You Not the hell of it, but like you're choosing self-care because you get that you matter and you understand that the day brings its own energy. And if you don't prioritize yourself, if you don't hold yourself as important, the chaos of the day will take you away, <laughs> right? It will. And when you prioritize the chaos of the day, what you're saying is bring more of that to me, please. And I, for one, I feel like I've had three years of chaos in one year watching this thing globally happening, um, you know, all the stuff I have talked about a gajillion times here. But I was talking about the personal journey and the new edges. So I'm really in this place of risking my significance. I'm finding out, like, is it, am I worth Am I worth a whole day by myself without responding anywhere, without talking to anyone, without, um, yeah, answering anyone, without calling people back, um, without returning any text messages? And am I worth a day all to myself if I haven't earned any money today, if I haven't done any dishes today, if I didn't wash any laundry today? holy crap, I didn't know how much I have invested in needing to earn it before I could take it. What about you? Does this ring any bells for you? I'm telling you, um, I just keep seeing it like we ha- on the one side, we have all this chaos and stress energy that we're invested in. And we were also taught that stress is a signal, stress can be a sign of a successful person. So sometimes I notice that people create stress, even though they don't have a lot of success, because they think they're going to be more successful based on how stressful they are. Does that make sense to you? Um, I can remember my parents early on, I grew up in an entrepreneurial household. So maybe it's different. Um, in other places, you know, but for me, my parents were always competing with how busy they were, how, how hard they had to work, how, who worked the latest on a Sunday night. And I say, there are no rewards for you. No, no, I am not handing out. I'm not handing myself any more awards for that. And I kind of never did, but I'm just learning like, wow, it's really challenging to think I deserve, I can have it just because you know, just because I can take some time for me. And just because I don't want to do something, I don't have to do it. Whoa. So the, these awarenesses have been so huge that I kind of feel like it's stressed. It put me in a new stress place. And I had some, I had some grieving to do around it. I really did. What about you? What's resonating in what I'm sharing? What are you finding personally speaking? Are things changing for you? Have there been some edges, you know, that you're discovering now? I wonder how this is landing for you. Because things are definitely changing. And, you know, I've been saying this for weeks, acclimating, accepting what is, allowing the feelings to be here. It's very, very necessary because things are definitely changing. In the past, I have worked so hard on making a healing practice successful. And now I just can't make myself do it because I see things so differently. I keep thinking about how, why is it that we prioritize money and earning and success and a certain kind of busyness over other things. Why does that seem, why is it that that seems more important than 
being kind to yourself, being in a good headspace, and then being kind to the people you interact with for the day and actually being of some service to people because you're not so wrapped up in your chaotic, your chaotic stories about success and the drama that comes with that, you know? I've just been so deeply processing that for myself and staying in wonderment about what it looks like to risk my significance and to place my new priorities. What are they? Because it's not about success and that crap anymore. It's about showing up. I am going to stand by me and hold my own hand and do the things I want to do because there's time in the day and I don't want to fill my day with things I used to do. You know, those of you who get it, you know, you can spend half a day crafting, writing a blog post, you know, crafting the perfect SEO, the titles, the this and the that. You can be researching hashtags till the cows come home, you know, all half the day, you could be busy with that stuff, wording and rewording and doing stuff like that. And, you know, I don't know, I just don't care. I don't care anymore about that stuff. And it feels that's been a long time coming, but it feels so huge. And so I keep looking at my day thinking, I can spend it any way I choose. And I really want to choose significant meaningful things, things that restore my energy and and bring delight and not deplete me, things that are of service, that do make life easier for other people. I, I care about that. I really want to be of service in my time. I want to be helpful to you and to my friends and to the people I see in healing sessions and our kids. And I want to add something, not take something away. I don't want to bring more chaos energy in where I go. And so, you know, this is that time. You have to prioritize what's meaningful to you. And self-care is high, high, high on that list. Several of you write to me and describe feeling lost now, feeling lost, feeling unclear what you're supposed to be doing, what you, where, where this is all going. You're finding these places in your life that are erupting in your relationships. There's, there are eruptions or micro eruptions, you know, things are changing and it's scary. And if you relate to that, all I need, all I want you to do, if you, if, if I could really help you, if you were coming to me and saying, help me, help me, what do I do? All I want you to do is hug yourself right now. Take a breath and remind yourself that this too shall pass and it will all pass. Things need to erupt before they can evolve. Things can need to transition before they can be transformed. You know what I mean? So however this time is going right now, make sure you're taking care of you. And make sure of the things you're choosing to do in a day, they better be. You know, this is just the spirit mama who loves you saying it. They better be important to you. They better be things that return, have a return on your investment. You know, they better be that for you. Because when I listen to some of the stories, and I'm, I'm raising my hand with you, I'm not standing aside saying I'm so great. And everybody's got the got their work cut out for them. I'm right walking with you. <laughs> so you but you know that. Um, you know, some of the places we can get ourselves into with other people, with mental dramas, the shenanigans. I'm just like, yikes. Am I right? Yikes. 
So slow it down. Take some rest for you. Try to unplug a little. Take some walks. Move your body. Get out in the sunshine. Take some baths. Take a book into the bath. Take your laptop. Not into the bath. Take your laptop and watch movies while you're in the tub. Do things that feel frivolous and extravagant, and it doesn't have to take all day long. But try and teach yourself your preciousness now. Try and teach yourself how to overcome your fear of not becoming something in this time, not being successful in this time, not earning enough money in this time, whatever your, you know what your deal is, right? Yeah. So if you know what your deal is, the thing you're always frittering on, you know, chewing on, help yourself. Take some time for you. Find out. Risk your significance. You know, time alone and on your own. Time alone and on your own. Otherwise, you will need to invent things to be upset about. And if you do that, and you have done that, and I have done that, we end up giving way too much in that exchange. And we're so exhausted by the drama and the chaos that there's little energy left to do much about it. Right? So gentle, gentle, kind, kind, less, less. (laughs) We have to say everything twice today. You know, just give yourself some space. And If things are changing for you, you have relationships, a lot is changing for me at warp speed. And right now, I kind of feel like there are very few personal conversations I want to be having right now. I can't even make myself, I can't even guilt trip myself about this. You know, it doesn't even work. So I have found that... um, the easiest thing to do is to put a post up on Instagram and update people that way because I can't, when people write and say, how are you? How are you? What's going on? I miss you. I'm overwhelmed already. So it's okay if you need to figure out how to do this time in a way that means some that feels good to you. It's okay. You don't have to jibber jabber your day away and your, your real friends and the family, you know, that you're close with, they get it. They will get it. And if they don't get it, help them learn by not giving in just because they're annoying or you're scared of their reaction. You know, just don't respond if you don't want to respond. It's okay. Everything has its season. And it's good and right to honor that season. Yeah. It's good and right to honor that season. So I'll leave it there for today. Um, I have some nice inspiration coming up and a, and a beautiful letter too that I'm, I'm looking forward to reading to you. So let's have some more coffee. I tell you, the sips never sound as good, and they almost don't taste as good in the travel mug. But that's okay, because I have my own teacups here in my office. I rather have a little teacup with you, you know. Do you have an office at home? Do you have a little space for yourself at home? Um... A lot of us don't go to the office anymore. I mean, I never had an office outside of the house, but I definitely have my own little room here, and I love it. And I st- it still reminds me of when I was a little kid and you would have special things in your room that just felt like real special, luxury, you know, cool, fun, sweet things. So I always keep a stash of... Uh, teacups, special little teacups, you know, like good china in my office. So cheers. Mm. So inspiration today, a friend of mine, hi, Carol, are you listening? A friend of mine 
that I have been connected to ever since I came online. I met her right away when I came online. She sent me an email the other day with this poem in it, and she just said, I just, I just felt like I had to send this to you. And <laughs> it, was, it was amazing timing because um, I had been out at the park walking. Just I've been walking a lot lately. It's in, it's in the 30s out, but um, and some days it's very windy, but it's still pretty easy to walk in the sunshine, listening to music and that feeling of letting things go, letting it be that you can't that you. It's even hard to explain, but you can't. It's just, you know, everything has changed and you wonder what is going on in the stars, what's happening with the planetary alignment. Um, is there some thing happening in the cosmos I wasn't aware of? You know, you just feel it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So on this day, I was at the park walking and... I just said to spirit, I really, I need to know you're with me because it's great that I'm able to help people in this time, but I too am feeling a bit scared and lost and things are reorganizing themselves and I want to feel alive. You know, I want to feel lit up even now. I don't want to be afraid, and I'm not, but you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to feel, I want to feel just as juicy and lit up as I, as I do any other time, you know? So it was so cool because like within the half hour, I received three different things from different friends, but I wanted to read you this poem from Carol because, you know, something about it just really, really touched me. The universe heard me and answered as it always does through people in your life. You know, that's usually how things come. Sometimes it speaks to you directly or you have a vision or you hear something, you get that intuitive hit. But a lot of times it'll come through the people in your life. It's so cool because Carol when she sent it, she said, Hi, this is just a little note from me to you because I was thinking of you. I heard this poem today and it made me think of some of your teachings and just overall resonated in some way. It made me think of you. And I knew right then, oh my God, I asked for help at the park. Here comes some help. So this is a poem by Louise Erdrich. And it's called Advice to Myself. Thanks again, Carol. Here we go. Leave the dishes. Let the celery rot in the bottom drawer of the refrigerator and an earthen scum harden on the kitchen floor. Leave the black crumbs in the bottom of the toaster. Throw the cracked bowl out and don't patch the cup. Don't patch anything. Don't mend. Buy safety pins. Don't even sew on a button. Let the wind have its way, then the earth that invades as dust, and then the dead foaming up in gray rolls underneath the couch. Talk to them. Tell them they are welcome. Don't keep all the pieces of the puzzles or the doll's tiny shoes and pairs. Don't worry. Who uses whose toothbrush or if anything matches at all except one word to another or a thought. Pursue the authentic. Decide first what is authentic then go after it with all your heart. Your heart. That place you don't even think of cleaning out. That closet stuffed with savage mementos. Don't sort the paper clips from screws from saved baby teeth. Or worry if we're all eating cereal for dinner again. Don't answer the telephone ever. Or weep over anything at all that breaks. 
pink molds will grow within those sealed cartons in the refrigerator. Accept new forms of life and talk to the dead who drift in through the screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oops. Okay, wait. Accept new forms of life and talk to the dead who drift in through the screened windows who collect patiently on the tops of food jars and books. Recycle the mail. Don't read it. Don't read anything except what destroys the insulation between yourself and your experience or what pulls down or what strikes at or what shatters this ruse you call necessity. And that was Advice to Myself by Louise Erdrich from Original Fire, circa 2003. Wow. You know, <laughs> kind of saying, don't do anything but the meaningful, what matters, what destroys the insulation between you and your experience, meaning, to me anyway, do the things that are going to help you come alive. Do the things that help you wake up. Do the things that help you come alive. As Howard Thurman said, don't ask yourself what the world needs. Ask yourself what makes you come alive and go do that. Because what the world needs is people who have come alive. You know, it's so interesting. Like we want to be needed in the world, don't we? We want to be seen as something special. It's okay to know that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but are you willing to be alive and excited and lit up all by yourself? Even if nobody knows it, you know, I think that's what she was talking about when Louise um, Erdrich, when she wrote, don't read anything except what destroys insulation between yourself and your experience or what shatters this ruse you call necessity. You know, throw stuff out. Don't answer the calls. It's okay. If you don't know what to do, maybe do nothing, you know. So I hope that serves you today. And also just a brief word on, ha, me and brief, just a brief word on if you get the hit to send somebody a poem, even if you feel, you know, stuff around it, I hope you will listen to your guidance because that day it was everything to me. I received a number of things in a really short amount of time and I knew my answer had come, you know, from walking at the park. And I'm so glad that Carol listened to her gut so I could come and share with you as well. And I know I had never heard of this poem before. I love it. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah. Cheers. Friends, this is the time where I usually ask you to support the podcast, and I appreciate so much you helping to get the word out. I really do trust in the flow of the universe, and I know that the people who are already looking for something meaningful and helpful in their lives are going to find this podcast one way or another. Um, so if you can be a part of helping that happen, I so appreciate it. I really, really do. And one of the ways you could be so helpful is to send a letter for me to read on the air. I always love having some thoughts, some words from you in the love posse. I think it adds to the conversation here. And, you know, I'm always so grateful. So um, send a letter. Hello at RobinHallett.com. And I always welcome a review that's super helpful too. It's really easy to do on most of the platforms you listen on. You can, well, you could certainly leave a comment too, which would be really helpful. But um, anyway, I got a great, <laughs> I got a great letter this week. Let's just move on.
So this letter, this goes out to you, Caitlin, and yeah, sending you all my love. Hello, Robin. Thank you for taking time to read this. I feel stuck in a hurricane of fear and resistance, and I would love to hear any words of love and healing that may come to you. My husband has decided he is enlisting in the army. He has big dreams of bettering himself, being happy, feeling motivated, feeling the balance of life. He sees it all so clearly. I see a man who has all of that in him already. Capable of, un- capable of unleashing all of the good himself, excelling in everything he does. I don't see why the military is the only way to spark these things in him. I judge that his taking this path into the army is resistance for him. I see it as not accepting that these things are already inside of him and the happiness around him. But I know that this is my judgment. It does not mean it is the truth. When I begin to think of him enlisting, the hurricane of fear and sadness and resistance consumes me. Stomach churning, body shaking, resistance screaming, no. I want to practice letting go, releasing it to the universe, trusting the process of life. But every time I open my mouth to do so, the dark hurricane takes over. All that he sees is the good that will come from the time spent in the service. He claims to know with his whole heart. I'm not sure what to do with all of this sadness and fear. If I step aside and just think, do I want him to be happy and feel accomplished? Do I want to support him in something he's passionate about? The answer is yes. Yet, as soon as I step into the reality that is the situation, I begin screaming, no. I've never felt resistance so deep. Still, there's a tiny voice saying that this is a huge practice opportunity for me. Thank you again for taking the time to read this letter. Thank you for all of the inspiration and light you share daily on Instagram and weekly through the podcast. You are an incredible, sparkly treasure. Mm. Virtual hugs, Caitlin. Well, my friend, absolutely. This is a huge opportunity for you. I'm going to cross out the word practice, and I'll tell you why. Because um, you are not here just holding the door for your partner, your husband, your, your best friend. You're not here just to hold the door for somebody else for your whole life. You're here to take up space for you. So this is a huge opportunity for you. I... You know, lately I've been talking to so many people who are married like us or in relationship, you know, whatever, whether it's like they want to have a kid or they want to have another kid or, you know, your guy is wants to enlist and or my guy was having cancer, you know, or this other person's person is really struggling to find meaningful work. Um We all have this thing where we're watching the person we love go through something huge. We go into this mode of sort of like wait and see, and this isn't really happening to me. You feel supportive of him and his dream and his uh, desire. You feel excited and supportive. Um, you're, You're saying that you see that he's putting himself through the long way around to get to something he already has inside of him. That's probably the story for all of us. I bet even you have a story about how you didn't need to do X, Y, or Z because it was with you all along. That's our classic Wizard of Oz story. Dorothy, you always had the power, right? When you're living it first person, it's much harder to know it without needing that mountain to climb. And so one of the things as we notice our friend or our beloved, you're noticing your hubby do this thing and you're judging, you're saying you're judging it 
ask yourself the same question. How is the struggle that I'm experiencing also like what I'm seeing him do in terms of he doesn't need to enlist just to prove to himself that he has the power? How can you convert that thing you're noticing about him and practice for yourself? Because I guarantee this is happening for you as well. How is this happening for you? Here is a gift for you, Caitlin. How is this happening for you? So um, what is the opportunity that's here for you? And how are you going to learn to help yourself be here in your life, first person perspective, and not be in wait and see mode about him, you know? Next is you're feeling a lot of resistance. I wonder, is there another time in your life where you felt, I know you said this is the deepest resistance you've ever felt, but has there been another time in your life where you felt this deep sense of no? Does this remind you of anything? And um, I wouldn't ask you that if it wasn't so true that usually things like this where we almost feel like we're behaving irrationally is because there is a historical reason for it that has to do with our own history that has probably way before you even met your husband you know so I would sit with that this is an opportunity for you how can we see this time as an adventure How can we see this time as an opportunity for our own journey? And as a reminder to, I need, you know, just that I need to be invested in me, not just in we. And I, I do believe we owe it to ourselves to stay interesting to us in this time, you know, to be doing things that are that are helping us, um, that we're enjoying. And so that's, that's such the biggest feeling is it feels like watch your tendency to be the caregiver and only that to be in the wait and see mode. My, you know, next it's not an either or either it's a yes or it's a no. It can be a yes and a no. It can be a yes, but it can be a no. And it can be all of it and more. You know, all of how you're feeling is all right. I do know when people suggest things to me and I have a really, really deep resistance, like like wild animal resistance. Sounds like you're having some wild animal resistance. There is usually some truth in what is being said or spoken. What is the truth that's here for you? You can sit with that. It feels like there's something surprising and wonderful about this, no matter which way it goes. You know, you may need to watch him going through this to learn more about your own journey because it feels very intertwined. Years ago, I married this couple. This friend of mine, she didn't finish college. And I think in her 30s somewhere, she was like, I have got to get my degree and not not just get my degree, but I have to go back to school. Like I never had the real university campus life and I've got to have that experience. And, you know, I remember listening to her and thinking, that's ridiculous. You don't need that. Kind of like you're saying, you know, you're you're judging the situation as the things that your husband thinks he'll get by enlisting. He already has these qualities within him. I felt the same way about my friend. Like, you don't need to go downstate and live on a dorm and acquire this massive debt just for this experience. You know, you're talking yourself into that, thinking you need to do it. But, you know, she didn't quit. She didn't quit. She needed to do that. And, you know, long story short, I ended up, I officiated at her wedding to the guy that she met downstate at the university. He was the maintenance guy in the dorm room. Something had broken down. I don't remember if it was the heater or the water heater, but this was even the bigger story for her was that she'd never been in a 
significant relationship. And if she hadn't gone down to university, she never would have met her guy. And, you know, they have a kid together now. It's been a beautiful many, many years. Um, And it really showed me, like, sometimes we just don't know. We think we see it so clearly. And could we hold out hope for each other that certain paths have to go through their evolutions, you know, their twists and turns. It's really important. Now, you're married, so you're a we. And this is, of course, going to impact you. Just like when Jeff was diagnosed with cancer, there was a huge impact on me. And there were certain things we had to decide together and certain things I had to face and he had to face and we had to face together. This is, I guess I'm saying everybody has their hero's journey, you know, and maybe this is the way for your husband and for you. We have to face these things and bear them out. So... (laughs) That's the psychic ding right there. Sometimes we have to bear them out without knowing. And your best is to try not to script it, what you think is going to happen. You know, you didn't say what the fear is, but maybe it's just the upheaval and, and that something will happen to him. He'll be deployed, you know, and something will happen. You know, we don't have to let fear be the teacher or the leader in this story. We can also go with adventure and we can also go with God. And I hope you are, that you ask spirit, help us. I open myself to you. Help me to see things clearly. You know, let's do it together now. I've already got a candle lit here. Help Caitlin see clearly. Help her to open to this time. And anyone listening who can relate in their own way, may we be open to the transformation and not fear the transitioning, not fear the upheaval and the unknowns that seem to loom large and terrorize us. Let us risk our significance. May we listen to the tiny voice that's saying, this is a huge opportunity for me. Help me to stay alive and awake to my own heart in this time now. Amen. I'm just reading this line again here. When I begin to think of him enlisting, the hurricane of fear, sadness, and resistance consumes me. Stomach churning, body shaking, resistance screaming no. I want to practice letting go and releasing it to the universe, trusting the process of life. But every time I open my mouth to do so, the dark hurricane takes over. My friend, has there been some trauma for you? Have you lost people in your life? Have things changed all of the sudden with the people you love or loved? This is where I'm going in my heart with this for you. So... In the coming days, really hold yourself tight. Hug yourself lots. You know how we do that. Put your arms around yourself in the morning. Take breaks. And try not to talk about this with too many people. There's a way that we make the chaos cloud much, much bigger. Ego has a hand in leading us sometimes. So hold your own counsel. And make sure when you do talk about it, it's with a trusted friend, somebody you know is who gives sound feedback and love and, um, you know, centered support, if that makes sense. Lastly, I'll say you're needing some TLC and some love and some support. Don't forget about yourself. Don't forget about you. I wish you both all the love and success in in meaningful ways for you both. And again, this feels, I keep hearing the word adventure and 
it feels like everyone is surprised in a in a good way. So let's let's see what happens. So so much love to you, beautiful soul, and to your husband. Um, I wish you both all the best. Well, friends, that wraps episode one seventeen. Good message today, and it's Saturday night over here. I'm looking forward to a little relaxation and movie time with my sweetheart and it feels so good to just do a little nothing sometimes doesn't it put on a little movie maybe make some popcorn and nestle in you know nest in my nest so I hope you are spending some time doing the same and um, that's it I'm gonna see you here next week or in a few minutes. And I'm sending you so much love. It's me, Robin. Sparkle Joy Christmas Cookie Hallet. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Life is very short. Let's make the very most of it. You are a precious gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. We are here to shine and shine bright. You are a gem and I love you. Do, 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 do. Life is precious and you are a spark of the divine. So shine like you know it. Rock it like you mean it. Cause you really, really mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. And mean it. Don't let crispy people tell you that you aren't sparkly. Cause you are. Cause you are. Cause you are. Thank you. I like that. Thank you. Give me a kiss.